now we are going to discuss soil treatment using grouting grouting technology has become a common ground improvement method used frequently for underground and foundation constructions the process of grouting consists of filling pores or cavities in soil or rock with a liquid form material to decrease the permeability and improve shear strength by increasing the cohesion when it is set cement based grout mixes are commonly used for gravelly layers or fissure rock treatment but the suspension grain size may be too big to penetrate sand or silty sand layers in this case chemical or organic grout mixes are also used in recent years the availability of ultra fine grout mixes has extended the performance of hydraulic based grout for soil treatment so here you can see that sandy gravel soil treated using ultra fine uh, cement mix the grout mix can be generally classified into four types number 1 mortar and paste such as cement to fill in holes or open cracks number 2 suspensions such as ultra fine cement to seal and strengthen sand and joints number 3 solutions such as water glass silicate and number 4 emulsions such as chemical grout The operational limits of different grout mix are dependent on the type of soils and the grain size distribution of the soil. Now here you can see the grain size distribution chart and uh, you can see that uh, different options are mentioned. You can see suspension with regular cement, suspension with ultra fine cement Uh, water glass solution and the chemical solution so it means uh, if the soil is falling in this region so chemical solution will be the viable option if the material is falling in this so water glass solution and if the material or the soil is falling in this region so suspension with ultra fine cement will be more viable option and uh, here obviously the suspension with regular cement so if we just consider the classification of grouting so we can have without ground displacement grouting and with ground displacement grouting and under ground uh, grouting with ground displacement we are having the two categories hydraulic fracturing and compaction whereas uh, the grouting without ground displacement we are having the penetration and the bulk filling and uh, there are two sub classes for the penetration permeation that is uh, impregnation uh, impregnation and uh, second one is the fissure or contact grouting the design for grouting and or alternatives need preliminary design or project planning and feasibility studies adequate investigation to be carried out at the feasibility stage includes the characterization of ground and groundwater and identification of fractured rock whether rock granular soils like alluvium sand and silts etc natural cavities that means the cursed or galleries which means the mine working tunnel storage galleries etc and then detailed design or special studies investigation methods drilling and direct inspection to accurately locate and determine local conditions 
taking coding samples for laboratory test drilling with drilling data recording to locate fissured zones voids and the interface between structure and surrounding ground borehole logging with bhtv scanner examination optical or seismic non destructive geophysical investigation that is the seismic resistivity water testing through constant head of falling head test conducted in borehole underground flow and temperature measurements pumping test to assessment of initial hydraulic conditions criteria for design the grout volume to be injected depends on ground porosity geometry of the treated zone grout holes spacing stage length and total depth to be treated the groutability of soil with particulate grouting has been evaluated based on the n value and this n is defined as n is equal to d15 of soil divided by d65 of grout grouting is considered feasible if n is greater than 24 and not feasible if n is less than 11 another alternative is to use n sub c and this n sub c is equal to d10 of soil divided by d95 of grout grouting is considered feasible if n sub c is greater than 11 and not feasible if n sub c is less than 6 so these criteria uh, can be considered uh another criteria you can see uh, as per ekbulat and uh, seglamar proposed a new n value as this so look at this formula where this is the water cement ratio is the water cement ratio w over c of grout fc is the total soil mass passing through 0.6 mm p is the grouting pressure d sub r is the relative density of the soil k1 in the formula k1 and k2 are the two constants k1 is 0.5 and k2 is 0.01 Uh, which are suggested by these researchers soil is considered groutable when n is greater than 28 and not groutable when n is less than 28 categories of grouting penetration grouting displacement grouting compaction grouting grouting of voids and jet grouting so here you can see the schematic representation of basic modes of grouting so you can see the simply the penetration that is the intrusion intrusion uh, basically means a forcible inclusion this is the penetration permeation that means uh, we are not forcing the grout but uh, through the voids the grout is moving through that soil and uh, here you can see the displacement that is the compaction grouting and you can see because of that you are having the increase in the volume over here and this is the most modern technique that is the jet grouting so with the special jet you know the grout is mixed with the soil and in this way uh, we can mix the grout with that soil in this fashion and uh, on this particular slide you can see the typical applications of grouting so we are having a number of applications of the grouting you can see Okay now look at the archaeology of grouts probably the archaeology is a new uh, term for you archaeology is basically you can say uh, the study of the past by excavation and analysis 
if uh, um, of its material remains. So I will repeat that archaeology is basically the study of the past by excavation and analysis of its material remains. So basic rheological properties are, so here you can see the word rheology, rheological, which has been derived from the rheology. Uh, rheology is basically the branch of physics that deals with the deformation and flow of matter. So stability, setting time, and viscosity. So these are the properties. And for stability, you can see that considered stable if particles remain in suspension until they reach destination. So as far as the setting time is concerned, it is the time required for the grout to harden and is in the range of 4 to 24 hours depending on additives used. Viscosity, proportionality factor relating shear resistance to the velocity gradient. So here you can see that the measurement of the viscosity of the grout that inner cylinder is stationary and the outer cylinder rotates and the measurement of torque enable the calculation of viscosity. So here we are having the rheological models. So you can see this one and this. And ultimately you can have the plot like that, the shear stress along vertical axis and the velocity gradient along horizontal axis. The rheological behavior of Bigham body is expressed as this equation. And in this equation, you can see that there are different uh, parameters, variables. So T naught over gamma is called rigidity. A thin plate with rough surfaces is immersed in the grout and initial yield stress can be determined from the amount of grout sticking to the surface. Once the flow time <coughs> from cone and rigidity are known, true viscosity can be determined. So this is the marsh cone which is being used to determine the viscosity. And uh, this is the chart uh, with which we can determine the viscosity of the grout. And uh, if you just look at this particular slide, relation between water cement ratio and viscosity for different types of cement, you can see in this particular figure. Okay, now we are going to discuss the permeation grouting. Permeation grouting is a term used to describe a ground treatment method in which grout is injected into a porous medium without disturbing its original structure. So this sentence is very, very important. I will repeat. Permeation grouting is a term used to describe a ground treatment method in which grout is injected into porous medium without disturbing its original structure. So without disturbing its original structure, that's a very, very important thing. In geotechnical engineering, this really refers to the process of filling the pores and joints in a soil and or rock deposit to change its geotechnical properties. Almost any grout material may be used for permeation grouting, but there are distinct limits on the grout makes used for specific types of soil or rock. Applications are for enhanced foundation bearing value, improvement of excavation character in sands and reduction of liquefaction potential. Well, you can see here the permission grouting has been done. The image shows a sample of permission grouted sand from a project that required steep vault footing excavation in running sands. 
The proposed excavation area was permission grouted with a micro fine cement slurry prior to cutting uh, footing trenches, resulting in a significant reduction in project cost. Unconfined compressive strength test performed confirmed the improvement. Particulate grouts. Uh, basically, this word, you know, uh, the particulate. Particulate means uh, the composed of different particles. So particulate grouts are typically water-based slurries of cement, fly ash, lime, or other finely ground solids that undergo a hardening process with time. These materials may be used to fill pores and joints in soil and rock, provided the grout particles are small enough to be carried through the pore or joint opening. A good rule of thumb is that the effective particle diameter in the grout suspension should be less than the dimension of the pore or joint aperture divided by 5. Slurry grout mixes used for permeation grouting are designed primarily to promote passage of the grout particles into the porous medium. The grain size of the slurry is matched to the pore aperture and steps are taken to assure the grout particles are properly dispersed in the grout. Both high-speed mixing and wetting agents are used to break up clumps. Uh, clumps uh, means a cluster or lump. So I will repeat that both high-speed mixing and wetting agents are used to break up clumps and aggregations of grout particles that would cause the grout to have larger apparent grain size than the actual grain size of the slurry. Water content is adjusted in the mix design to control the mean free path between the slurry particles rather than simply providing enough water to allow complete hydration. Two types of slurries are used. The stable slurries exhibit less than 10% bleed. Uh, bleed means uh, the separation of water from the slurry. So I will repeat that two types of slurries are used. The stable slurries exhibit less than 10% bleed at final set. Unstable slurries bleed from 10 to 90% of the water prior to setting. When solids and water are mixed, the solid particles begin to settle out and water is displaced upward. That means bleeding. The, process, the forces acting in the suspension to reduce the setting of the particles are random impacts of water molecules against the particle, viscosity of water, interparticle attraction, and friction. Since the interparticle attraction is inversely proportional to the square of mean free path length between particles and the other forces are inversely proportional to the cube of the particle diameter, either reducing the particle size or increasing concentration reduces the bleed. As a general rule, the Portland cement grout 0.66 into 1 is the water to cement ratio by weight, which is the borderline between stable and unstable grout. Stable slurries are too thick to be used for permeation grouting of all, but the most coarse grained soils are extremely fractured rock. Unstable slurries having water to cement ratio from 0.66 to 1 to 3 to 1 by weight may be used to permeation grout granular soils with effective grain size down to coarse sand or fractured rock with joint width as low as 0.01 inch. However, the bleeding of these grouts causes channels and open pathways to remain through the grout. To eliminate the effect of blade on Portland cement grout, 
additives are used to hold the cement grains in suspension at water to cement ratios that would otherwise be quite unstable. The most common additive is a water suspension of bentonite. Even small amounts of bentonite increase the interparticle forces dramatically and hold the cement particles in suspension. Typically, element or bentonite grout used for permeation grouting has water to cement ratio varying 1 into 1 and 2.65 to 1 and exhibits zero bleed. In many cases, it is necessary to grout soil and rock formations having an effective pore aperture smaller than the allowable aperture for Portland cement grout. Type 3 cement or microfine cement grouts are used to grout these finer materials. The grain size of type 3 cement is about 20 microns versus 50 microns for type 2. While the grain size of the microfine cement grout is between 4 to 8 microns. Well, this thing should be noted that at smaller grain sizes, the interparticle attraction forces become very large in comparison to the weight of the grain and the benefits of the reducing grain size are lost. Okay, now we have reached here, that is the topic of chemical grouting. <clears throat> Chemical grouting is defined as any grouting material characterized by being a pure solution, no particles in suspension. So this thing must be noted that no particles in suspension. In practice, suspended solids are often added to chemical grouts to modify the solution properties as additives. The types of chemical grouting materials have been classified into six categories by Carroll 2003. Sodium silicate formulations, acrylics, uh, lignosulfites, lignosulfonates, uh, phenoplast, aminoplast, and other materials. Chemical grouting is a ground treatment method for soils with relatively low viscosity grout. There are many types of chemical grout, each having different strength, cost, viscosity, toxicity, and durability. The major difference between particulate grouts and chemical grouts is in the penetrability. Chemical grouts can penetrate into soil with finer particles. The penetrability for chemical grouts is a function of the solution viscosity, whereas penetrability for particulate grouts is a function of particle size. So here you can see that uh, penetrability of various grouts. Uh, so you can see that uh, the cement, it can be used in this, in these cases, and uh, this is for bentonite and so we are having the other grouts. Now you can see the case study Michigan Street Tunnel. Uh, here you can see that the 31 meter long 6 meter diameter tunnel was constructed using the new Austrian tunneling method because the site's ground conditions primarily consist of fine sand, chemical grouting was specified to stabilize the sand and enable opening uh, open face tunneling. Uh, Nicholas, uh, Nicholson treated 3,425 cubic yards of sand with a sodium silicate based grout. The chemical grout was injected through 41 tube uh, mankate. Mankate uh, is uh, basically, you know, uh, 
a glove. So I will repeat that uh, mankit is basically you can say a special type of glove or sleeve. Uh, each one over 100 feet long, the TAM sleeves were drilled horizontally in order to maintain an active undisturbed roadway above. The chemical grouting process created a treated mass of stabilized sand so the tunnel could be excavated with less risk of overburden collapse. Studies are available to confirm the longevity of chemical grouting in controlling infiltration and inflow of underground water in underground structures. The treatment did not show any signs of distress uh, with the stored number of cycles of weathering as well as cost effective. Okay, now we are going to discuss the compaction grouting. So, chem compaction grouting is a ground treatment technique that involves injection of thick consistency soil cement grout under pressure into the soil mass consolidating and thereby densifying surrounding soils in place. The injected grout mass occupies white space created by pressure densification. Pump pressure as transmitted through low mobility grout produces compaction by displacing soil at depth until resisted by the weight of the overlying soils. So here you can see the compaction grouting Uh, when injected into very dense soils or bedrock, compaction grout remains somewhat confined since the surrounding material is quite dense. However, when injected into under-consolidated or poorly compacted soils, grout is able to push these materials aside. When grouting treatment is applied on a grid pattern, the result is improved compaction of displaced soils and a greater uniformity of the treated soil mass. As a secondary benefit, the resulting grout columns add strength in the vertical axis as uh, typical grout compressive strength exceed those of the surrounding soils. Compaction grouting applications include densification of foundation soils, raising and relieving of structures and foundation elements, mitigation of liquefaction potential, uh, augmentation of pile capacity uh, and uh, pile repair and uh, densification of utility trench backfill soils. Although densification of foundation soils subject to long-term settlement <coughs> remains to be the principal application, ground improvement methods incorporating compaction grouting methods have become increasingly accepted by the engineering community as a means of mitigating liquefaction soils influencing existing facilities. Inherent in the grouting process is the capacity to work in areas of limited access and existing improvements to treat discrete zones within the soil profile. So here you can see this arrangement to carry out the compaction grouting. So compaction grouting, also known as low mobility grouting, is a grouting technique that displaces and densifies so loose granular soils reinforces soils and stabilizes subsurface voids or sinkholes. Compaction grouting improves ground conditions by displacement. So you can see that because of the compaction grouting, we are having the displacement of soil. Look at that. And that's why you are having this larger mass of the grout. This way, this and this. Site investigation. A comprehensive knowledge of subsurface condition is important. 
a site investigation report generally uh, contains site geology and history, soil gradation, and the uh, in situ horizontal permeability of each treatment stratum, type and uh, condition of nearby structure and utilities, together with plan and elevation location, will further assist program development. Now, the geotechnical considerations. Number one, the in situ vertical stress in the treatment stratum must be sufficient to enable the grout to displace the soil horizontally. Number two, the grout injection rate should be slow enough to allow pore pressure dissipation. Number three, compaction grouting can usually be effective in most silts and sands provided that the soil is uh, not near saturation. Number four, soil that uh, lose strength during remolding should be avoided. Number five, greater displacement will occur in weaker soil strata. Excavated grout bulbs confirm that compaction grouting focuses improvement where it is most needed. Number six, collapsible soils can usually be treated effectively by adding water during drilling prior to compaction grout injection. Number seven, stratified soils, particularly thin stratified soils, can be cause for difficult or reduced improvement capability. So here, compaction grouting delivery method First is the installation of grout pipe. This is the grout pipe. So drill or drive casing location, very important, and record ground information from casing installation. Then the next stage is the initiation of grouting. So typically bottom up, but can be Top down. So usually uh, compaction grouting is carried out from bottom to top. Grout quality is very important. You will have to check it. Pressure and or volume of grout is usually limited. Slow uniform stage injection. So we will first carry out the grouting over here, then over here. So in this way, the grouting will be done. Then the continuation of grouting, as I have mentioned on the previous slide, so in this way you can continue the grouting. So on-site batching can aid control. Grout quality is very important. Again, pressure, grout quality, and indication of heave are controlling factors. Sequencing of plan injection points, very important. Improvement conditions. Typically, greater than 100 kPa overburden stress is required to maximize densification. Limited densification can be achieved with less overburden. This stress can come from overburden soils, surcharge loads, and or foundation loads. This point is important when densification is the primary intent a replacement ratio and pressure criteria is applied to each stage of compaction grouting. Replacement ratio must be from 5 to 15 percent and your replacement ratio is uh, the compaction grout volume divided by the treatment volume. And here the treatment volume means the volume of the soil which is being treated with this cement grout volume. So this ratio is basically uh, you can express it in percentage that is called as the replacement ratio in percentage and that must be from 5 to 15 percent. This ratio is determined based on the existing density, the soil density range and the amount of displacement necessary to affect the improvement. The maximum pressure criterion prevents fracture and ground heave and compensates for stiff zones in the treatment area. 
Vertical stages are usually set at two to three feet intervals. Tighter grid spacing will generally lead to better results. Now the applications of compaction grouting. Karstic regions, pretreatment for prevention of potential sinkholes is common. Pretreatment really involves drilling down to and into limestone surface to locate and fill any cavities followed by improvement of loose soil above the rock surface. Then the rubble fill. Rubble is basically the broken remains of an object, really rock. So rubble fill, uh, construction, debris and other similar fills are often placed in an uncontrolled manner to close the wide spaces and minimize potential settlement impact, compaction grouting is applied in a regular pattern. Poorly placed fill, provided sufficient overburden stress exists, a proper program of compaction grouting can treat the poorly placed fill material efficiently. Then the application, the loosened soil, treatment construction generated ground disturbance can often be the cause of soil losing near the work area and can affect nearby structure the injection of compaction grout soon after the disturbance occurs can compensate for the disturbance by re-establishing the original stress state and prevent deformation beyond the work area Liquefiable soils. Ground improvement consists of uh, density increase, cellular containment, and or reinforcement. Well, cellular containment uh, is basically means the binding together. Soil permeability is an important parameter in determining the rate of compaction grouting. Then you would find the application of compaction grouting in collapsible soils. Collapsible soil conditions exist in specific regions where wind-blown cells have accumulated or intermittent stream flow uh, deposition has occurred. Here the intermittent means stopping and starting at intervals. Treatment of this soil, these soils, or you can say treatment of this soil is possible by forcing a restructuring of fine grains into a tighter configuration. Now look at the advantages of compaction grouting. Pinpoint treatment. So pinpoint means accurate treatment. Speed of installation is high. Wide application range as we have already discussed. Effective in a variety of soil conditions. Can be performed in a very tight assess and low headroom conditions. Non-hazardous, no waste, spoil uh, disposal. No need to connect to footing or column. So these are the advantages and uh, some other advantages are also given non-destructive and adaptable to existing foundations, economic alternatives to removal and replacement or piling, able to reach depths unattainable by other methods, enhanced control and effectiveness of in-situ treatment with Denver system. Denver system is the modern system which is being used in the compaction grouting. <clears throat> now here you can see the case study and uh, that is uh, for the pump station in the Colorado. Construction of wastewater lift station at the uh, McLellan pump station included the sinking of 40 feet deep, 30 feet diameter shaft through uncompacted native silt sands. The shaft was designed as a series of 10 feet deep concrete ring section installed from that top down. 
with the bottom of shaft reaching design elevation at 40 feet below grade. So you can see that here the compaction grouting underway to densify the, uh, the, the disturbed soils between a 30 feet diameter shaft and a previously installed drilling pier. So some unanticipated problems were faced during the construction process at this site. The problem due to site friction was overcome by air and water jetting. Additional fill was placed to restore the site to grade and the shaft was then completed. So here you can see the cross section showing typical stage compaction grouting. So look at this one. Okay, now we are going to discuss the jet grouting. Jet grouting is a grouting technique that creates in situ geometries of soil crete using a grouting monitor attached to the end of the drill stem. The grouting monitor is advanced to the maximum treatment depth. High velocity fluid jets are then initiated from ports in the side of the monitor. The jets erode and mix the in situ soil as the drill stem and grouting monitor are rotated and raised. Excess soil crete rises to the surface through the borehole annulus where it is contained and disposed of. So you can see the process of jet grouting. Look at that, that the jet grouting is being done from bottom to top in this fashion. And here you can see jet grouted soil crete columns to underpin and uh, provide excavation support for the wall at the Bear Healthcare Facility in Walpol, MA. And here you can see the jet grouting stabilization at TBM breakout location for construction of a new sewer tunnel at the Brightwater Treatment Plant in King Country WA. Depending on the application and soils to be treated, there are three primary systems of jet grouting. So I need your attention. There are three primary systems of jet grouting. The single fluid system, soil crete S, the double fluid system, soil crete D, the triple fluid system, soil crete T. So first look at this one, the single fluid system, the injection of cementitious grout slurry at high velocity to erode and mix the soil. That is the simplest uh, you can say system. Then comes the double fluid system, the injection of cementitious grout slurry at high velocity, sheath in a cone of air at an equally high velocity to erode and mix with soil. Well, the word sheath means the outer cover. And then comes the triple fluid system, the injection of water at high velocity, sheath in a cone of air at an equally high velocity to erode the soil while simultaneously Trimmy injecting a cementitious grout slurry from beneath the erosion jets. So these are the three systems which are being used for jet grouting. So here you can see the schematic representation of the three most common jet grouting. So single fluid, double fluid and the triple fluid. There are more variations of these systems. 
then there are system themselves. But in most cases, they are bottom-up process. That is to say, they are hydraulic rotary drilling to reach the design depth and at that point initiate jet grouting parameters and procedure to create a cementitious soil matrix commonly called soil crate. During grouting, the borehole annulus must be large enough to permit unimpeded uphole spoil return. This allows for control of the in-situ stress environment. A lack of this spoil return will result in hydro fracturing the ground and loss of control. Loss of this control can lead to extreme inconsistencies in the soil crate quality and geometry. So here you can see the schematic diagram showing the process of jet grouting and uh, you can see that first we are simply have lowered this arrangement I mean to say this and then you know grout is being injected and it, it is being rotated and then you can see that in this way the soil crate is being created so in this way you can have a number of you know, columns of soil crates Jet grouting procedure. Pre-drilling or foundation coring may be necessary to assess the treatment zone. Other emerging jet grouting systems include superjet and X-jet grouting. In superjet system, a double fluid system, uh, lent or specialized tooling, and high injection energy for enhanced erosion capability up to 5 meter diameter and an X jet system a triple fluid system using a pair of colliding erosion jets to create a more uniform and controlled diameter of treatment so these are the two modern you can say the systems which are being used in the jet grouting conclusion so grouting is a versatile technique and has been proven to be suitable to many ground improvement application. So in this lecture, we mainly focused on the four different types of grouting techniques. Number one, permeation grouting, chemical grouting, compaction grouting and jet grouting. Thank you.